Welcome to the Malibu Studio. I'm food and fitness coach Lori Corbin. You might not be paying attention right now to maybe your posture, maybe you're paying attention to your mood, but for sure, you're most likely not paying attention to your breath. And that's what we're talking about today, breath work. How you can really change your insides from your oxygen intake, whether through your nose or through your mouth, you're really going to be excited about doing some of these exercises today. Super easy ways to change your life. Without breath, there's no life, right? Right, Chris? Yes. Okay. Yeah. My guest today is Chris Tai. He is a master in the world of breath work and a lot of mind body techniques. And he's got a great little accent. So I just want you to be patient with us today. But we're going to talk about some really, really fun ways for you to bring yourself into the present, right? Yes. Okay, so tell me a little bit about, you're obviously, you've been doing breath work for quite some time. Um, and tell me, first of all, why that is so important for everyone. Every human being breathes between 20,000 times to 30,000 times per day. So breathing is essential. It's like no breath, no life. So 20,000 times to 30,000 times per day, I don't think about inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And if I choose to be conscious, I can choose how many seconds I want to inhale, hold my breath, exhale. You have your dog here and look, she's super chill. She rests. And as a human, we lost this sense of resting, doing nothing. Even though when we do nothing, we want to read, we check social media, and these spark a lot of things, serotonin, dopamine, and the body never restore or rest naturally. So um, uh, breathing, it's a great master key to, uh, you can change your state. If you are like very low, you can active your breath. <sighs> or if you are too stressed, you can regulate by. <sighs> so breathing is a really amazing tool every human being have for to regulate your state and to um, be able to rest in demand or to active your, um, yourself in demand. And um, it's something everybody can master. The other neat thing about what Chris is saying, which I love is we have a choice. Most of the time we can't say, hey heart, could you be a little slower? No, we can't do that. We can change the way we breathe. Even though if we weren't thinking consciously, our body would breathe. So it's kind of half of the time we're working on it and half of the time we're letting the body do what it naturally does anyway. And that could be meaning we're out of step with our breath, we're breathing too quickly. And I'm gonna guess, you said we have a chance to breathe so many breaths in our lifetime, we would probably prefer to breathe less breaths. <laughs> Imagine you have a car and uh, you are always like vroom, 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 putting a lot of gas and brake, and gas brake. Instead to regulate your motor and the machine and slower and steady now it's like your car is going to go longer and uh, the durability of the car will be much much longer it's the same for us um, as i share it it's like your body function the best when your body is homeostasis homeostasis means balance and everything in nature is about balance equilibrium we work great in balance um, so breathing not too much or not too low it's the purpose of the breath. And now it's like, it, it, it's so necessary. Carbon dioxide for um, exhale, uh, uh, the toxin. Uh, it, it's like breathing is a core. Any practice, spiritual practice, um, certain Christian uh, Orthodox um, tribes, uh, anywhere, breathing is part of life. What is very interesting, what um, you become very hype now, like ice bath, sauna. Um, this was used by Roman and Greek, we talk about over 2,000 years ago <laughs> or 3,000 years ago. You go in Eastern Europe, you go in those, um, North Europe, it's like cold plunge, uh, sauna. It's part of the culture, it's natural because it's healthy and we have all the things. So breathing is part of it also.
Nothing new then. Chris no. is saying this is not new stuff. It's just kind of hip right now. Yeah. Here um, in U.S., they are very good to rebranding things who exist, and I think it's amazing. But the thing is to go back to the source for me. It's why I travel all around the world with Yogi, with um, Chinese master in Qigong, with Japanese master in Kiko. And my goal is always to go to the source. When I was 21, I was in Tibet. And uh, teaching Kung Fu to the monk, and I was learning two more. I'm a seeker of um, longevity because the goal here is to die uh, the youngest possible, the latest possible. And uh, in the best shape possible, yeah, right? Right. Yes. right. It's not necessarily longer, it's better, I yes. would say. Yeah. Yes. I don't want to be around here laying around. That'd be icky. Yeah. The first pillar is how you nourish your body. And when I say nourish your body, it's what? Breath. The first things you need oxygen. Second, the water you drink, the quality of your water, and the food you eat. And in every culture, Ayurveda, um, um, Chinese medicine, the first medicine, it's what you eat. It's like, it's very essential in the way you breathe. Also, pranayama, qigong, kiko, I go back to. The second pillar, very important as any human being, is sleep. In the Guinness Book of World Record, you cannot break the record who can spend the most day without sleeping. You cannot do that because your heart will stop and you will die. So this is a, a world record you cannot do. The third, uh, the third pillar of need is connection, affection. And um, we don't understand the people who live the longest are the people who have friend for the longest time because it gives you a purpose to uh, belong in community. Affection is essential. Is the last need, the last pillar is movement. The first function of our neurons is to adapt to complex movement. It's not logos talking, but to adapt to complex movement. It was hunting, gathering, mating. This is where dopamine came from because dopamine is never released like it's enough. You want always more because you need to eat all the time. You need connection, affection. But the way now dopamine is released in the body, we are so, uh, you remember, unnatural. It's like we, the phone and um, the connection and everything like buying. We, we don't have this uh, sense of pause S um, to um, have a more like slow lifestyle. We want everything now and we want everything fast. And patience, it's part of nature. It will lose the sense of patience. So breathing can teach us how to slow down and um, to be with the present. And this is what the most important things when I teach uh, breathing, uh, movement, or mindfulness is to be with the present. He's going to tell you something about being in the present that this is probably the most key part of our show today. So I want to make sure you really get this dynamically. But um, I listen to podcasts all the time. I love them. And I listen to all these medical doctors. Okay. And I love when they say, and they've never said this in the last 20 years, but now just recently, really, when you say, what does it all come down to? I might not say breath. I would say love. And that sounds so woo woo, sounds so touchy feely, but he's right. When you discover all these people that live in the blue zones, the places where people live the absolute longest, it's not that they're eating the Mediterranean diet, although that might be helpful, mm -hmm. but it's that they have connection with their friends and their family and they really enjoy mm. their life and so that's hopefully one of the one of the major points that we can bring to you today because it does sound so funny like oh no all, I can sing the Beatles song right all we need is love mm. but um, it certainly starts with that and we're so busy and I think it's so funny that and it's with me right now is that we want to be connected to people and we think the way to do that is Facebook or Instagram mm. and it's so lonely and they have study after study realized that even young people just tragically uh, even the makers of some of these devices and when they created these social complex uh, you know apps and stuff they said if I could do it again I would not let a teenager mm. have access to this mm -hmm. until they were late, you know, 18 or whatever. So back to why you want to stay in the moment right here. Yes. We are always here now. Uh, you cannot breathe in the past. You cannot breathe in the future as you cannot move in the past. And you cannot move in the future. What we do is cognitively, uh, what happened between our ears, we think about the past or the mistake. 
happen or all the things is like the way we map the world or our life is based on that, our experience and belief. And this is how we map our future. So I don't map my future with a new experience or imagination. What can I create? I'm going to create something based on what I experience. So to be with the present, it's always the possibility to shift or to rewrite the meaning of what happened to me, for me or through me. It, it doesn't matter to be with. It's the only moment I can check with myself. If I'm tense, what is happening between my ears? Do I'm committed to my story or I'm committed to my transformation? I get only this moment to create a different choice if I choose to be with the moment. Let's just say you're at work, yeah. you've got a really mean boss, yes. you've got a really hard deadline, you know your kid, one kid's at home sick, you know you gotta pick up somebody in 20 minutes mm. and take them to the dentist, whatever. Um, what would might be something you would tell uh, a room full of people at that moment, like sure. how am I going to breathe, or what? What am I? What is the speak I'm going to say to myself? <laughs> I, I think it's like um, when I breathe like that, it's to anchor myself. I start to learn breathing when I was six years old, so it's part of myself. It's yeah. not uh, my second nature. Mm -hmm. So through martial art, it was I, I was fed by by breathing and movement. So when people uh, get into this place. First of all, it's like practice with consistency, great excellence. And when I say that, if every day you are in urgency and you are in panic mode, now you practice with consistency, urgency, panic mode, and you become black belt, excellent and that. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> Not good. So basically is going to be to disrupt this habit. So when we talk about sacred habit, when or ritual, when uh, uh, I practice ritual. What means ritual is a sacred habit. Is that ritual? Yeah. Okay. So uh -huh. a ritual is like when you put consciousness, awareness and presence in something you do daily. Praying, people who pray, it's a sacred habit. And our life is made of only habit. You wake up, you are your tea, your coffee, or you brush your teeth, and you repeat daily, daily, daily. So you become black belt on that. It's because we're made to be in safe and security. So we create this bubble and we take the same way for to go somewhere and we do the same thing because to be always changing, traveling, it's very um, panicking for uh, your um, metabolism and for your, your mind because you need to control your environment. Right. So what would be that? So let's say I'm at work. Yeah. I know there's going to be, I want, he, Chris is going to show us a couple breaths. Yeah. This is what we're going to take home today. So the, the panic breath yeah. or the unpanic breath, I'm at yes. work. I am stressed to the max. I'm frazzled. I'm out of time. I know I've got, you know, people obligations. Yes. What, how might you coach someone to breathe? So you need to stop, like to have the remote control of your life, to consciously pause the moment. And this is the hardest things. People, they don't know how to pose. So it will be posing this moment. Yes, like that. <laughs> okay. Because you are in urgency mode and what you need is to create something important for yourself. What we go back to the sacred habit. It's important, my well-being, to be balanced is how I'm going to respond better in this moment. So what I will do, you do that six times, only six times, is to inhale through the nose, and a long exhale to the mouth. Like you are blowing through a, thro uh, a straw, blowing through a straw. So it's going to be like that. And I like to close my eyes. That yes. feels good. Why to close my eyes? Because like that, I can be with myself. It's called interoception. When I can perceive myself from within. So the two inhale, it's called um, um, the uh, side. So we take like every eight minutes, your body take a side, like a side. Like a sigh, like, yeah. ah, <sighs> okay, exactly. Sigh. Why? Because your lungs are like, a, if you see the branch of the trees, you have a teeny branches, alveola at the end, and we never take all the oxygen to the end of the alveola. And because if we talk about mechanic of breathing, my primary muscle for to breathe is my diaphragm and intercostal, the muscle between. And because my lungs are stuck 
like almost like um, glued or um, touching my uh, thoracic cage and diaphragm, my lung doesn't move by themselves. They move by breathing and using my diaphragm and intercostal. But the oxygen never go completely to the end of the alveola. It's why we sigh because like that we pull the oxygen to the end of this alveola, this minuscule thing. So it's like... A long exhale regulate the vag um, vagal tone or vagus nerve. The vagus nerve, yes. yes. So longer you exhale, more you're going to regulate yourself. So one inhale, second inhale, exhale longer. Yeah, I love to close my eyes because home is always inside. This is your place, this is your home. Do you invite anybody? No. And we invite kind of feeling and thoughts all the time. We don't like so much, but we are so good by repetition, we don't know how to pause this moment. So this simple exercise, after that you have so many different breath work. Box breathing, um, the joy breathing, it's like so many. And people, they say, which one? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Take one, mm -hmm. and because I don't practice for to be better at practice, I practice for to be better at life. The way I train, it's for to be better at life. Um, free of injury, to be strong in every angle. So everything I do, it's because the most important in life for me, it's life itself. So breathing is going to regulate my autonomous nervous system. We talk about that. It's going to give me clarity and to anchor myself with the present moment. So use this breathing. It's like you have a ton of video outside. Use one and check with yourself. Hey, you know what? This worked for me. But if you practice with consistency, you will create excellence. And people want so much diversity. No. Take one, practice, practice, and you're going to feel a shift. After that, so many things you can practice. Yeah, I think there's a book out. It was a long time ago. Uh, Megan, was it? Freakonomics. And it was you know, why the Beatles were better than anybody else. Why this violin uh, player, Stravinsky, was better. And the answer was 50,000 hours. Mm -hmm. It was accumulative work. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing as, as Chris is saying. Any habit, not that you have to count. But um, that's a beautiful mm -hmm. example. I call it two, one. It's like two, one. one. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Two in, one. And then the box breathing, guys. Okay, picture it. Breathe in for four. Hold for four. Exhale for four, hold for four. So if you can imagine that one, and I think I've even done that driving. Yes. <laughs> don't don't kill yourself. But yeah. yeah. And do you think there's differences, um, as I, I imagine you would say, uh, it, nose breathing different than mouth breathing? For sure. How well? So first of all, the first function of the nose is to breathe. Okay. The first function of your mouth is eating. And sometimes when we are uh, doing a lot of uh, um, um, training or we are uh, in this fight and flight response, we're going to breathe through the mouth mm. for to regulate ourselves. So um, nose breathing first, first. Uh, I do such, certain breath work, it's called rebirthing. Uh, some people call it holotropic or breath work. It's the mouth breathing experience. Why? Three, because two, you're one, going yeah. to completely unbalance uh, the CO2 and oxygen and you're going to create a catharsis. And what is important, sometimes it's like we were sharing, your mind is spinning so much. And um, you cannot anchor yourself with the present moment. When we do this kind of breathing, sometimes a shift going completely happen. Uh, you're going to feel how your um, your uh, limbs your going, hands, yeah, your hands, like this. or yeah. you can be very hot, very cold. So when this happens in your body, it's like people, they get really instantly anchor with what's happening and the chattering stop it's why meditation for me it's about stopping the chattering or not stopping the chattering to just witness the chattering because the chattering is always there and we are like a kind of um, uh, um monkey brains yeah monkey brains <laughs> or like the cat like chasing his tail can i detach myself from the chattering can i see that just it is a way it is. Mm -hmm. It's most of the time irrelevant for me. Quite wild, guys. When you go into that, um, this breath, uh, very, um, what I call super, um, um, not hyper uh, ventilation, I call that super ventilation because I choose 
to completely be in balance and breathing through my mouth. It's a conscious choice. Now it's like I'm going to be completely unbalanced inside. But what I love, it's like driving a fast car and I don't drive car, I, drive, <laughs> I, I ride motorcycle. Mm -hmm. uh, it's to be able to control that and to color outside the line. So you mean, instead to do, I use my finger or my hand to draw my breathing. So it's going to be, I like that one way more. Okay. Um, I think the interesting thing, obviously, this is why I wouldn't say don't try it at home, but you can really see you'd need a, a, a guide because we don't know what we're doing. Mm. <laughs> yes, and that does kind of, you do get very electric. I, I liken to the feeling of I was electrical unit. If you put a light bulb in my mouth, mm. I could light up the room. It was just very, your body feels very um, ecstatic, kind of awake and alive. Yes. Yeah, and it's quite the experience. I use martial arts, I use meditation, I use movement, um, what we use in uh, mobility. Um, why movement is important? Because as I was sharing, your primary muscle for breathing, uh, it's your diaphragm and intercostal. Most of the people, um, they don't teach properly the mechanic. So when I teach movement, it's for two opening uh, my intercostal and connecting with my diaphragm. Uh, everything on the purpose. Um, we have so much now knowledge about uh, anatomy, uh, neuroscience. I think it's, um, it's very important to understand how our body works. We can talk about breathing yeah, and it's irrelevant. It's to feel your breath. It's to understand how your body works and how it affects your mind, your body, the way you interact with yourself, the way you interact with the world. So breathing for me, it's the foundation of my practice. If I, if I meet myself in the real life, would I would like to have a coffee with myself, to sit with myself and to have a conversation. And most of the people, they don't like themselves. It's like they pretend, they don't say it, what they repeat, I'm not good enough, I'm not beautiful, I'm not young, I'm too this, I'm, but nobody say, hey, do you really enjoy to have a coffee with yourself? Yes. And can you be silent with yourself to understand I can mess up, it's still be lovable, home is always inside, and also stopping this seeking from external approval. And then humming, what humming. about humming? So yeah. Humming, it's very, um, it's very nourishing sound. Mm. And the sound mm. of mm, when we do it, and we inhale the nose, exhale the nose, it liberates more nitric oxide and O. Nitric oxide, why is this important? Because it's a vasodilator, it's antifungal, antibacterial, so it's antiviral, so you have a lot of good property and it regulates the vagus nerve what we call vagal, uh, vagal tone. Vagal tone. So yeah. it's very important, like, you know that when something is good, you do, mm. <laughs> mm, Yes. Uh, mm. Mm. And naturally the body know that, that when you can do it consciously with um, presence, so I'm going to choose to hum, it's going to be like that. And if I add a smile, it's going to change completely my state. So I'm inhaling. Mm. I use my finger always. I love to draw my breathing. Mm. We will do that if we eat a, a chocolate cake or we are like, we have, mmm, it's delicious. So, Humming is very good also to regulate our state. Here's my takeaway from talking with Chris. Number one, breath work is essential. Simple exercises that can change our brain, change our body, change our digestion, changing our sleep, and changing our mood. That's gonna change our life. Number two, stay in the present. No time like it, right? 
Don't think about the worries of the past. Don't worry about the challenges of the future. Stay in the here and now for your best bet. Thanks for joining us. I hope to see you on the Malibu studio again real soon. Our show drops every Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time.